All right, folks, we're back. I plugged in my laptop here. And so I left off saying that there were some other ways, other than these traditional textbook circuits, for fixing your power on, my power on reset issue, and hopefully yours. The, uh, the two textbook sort of methods we have here are an RC network and an RC network with a diode. Now, there is a third that they also talk about, which is using a transistor for a, uh, a brownout situation, which makes sense, but look at all those parts. Screw that. I'm not adding that many parts to my, my design. I've already printed the circuit board, and I don't want to do that. So there are some other methods that can help drastically that they don't really talk about because eh, they're just they're a little bit different. They're more, they're more uh, specific to your design. Now, with my circuit... I have, on the other side of this, I'll show you, part of the issue is there is this 470 microfarad capacitor. The reason why that's there, by the way, there's a DC to DC converter here, is this is, uh, this is also going to power a high current USB device for charging phones, as well as my small flip-flop circuit. So, it's doing two things. Now, when I'm just using my little flip-flop circuit, though, then I have a problem because all the power is being stored in that capacitor for that really long time. When you're seeing that really slow slope on the oscilloscope, it's because there's a lot of voltage left in that capacitor. And maybe we can actually look at that. So I did wire up uh, a lead here. Do, 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 do. So part of it is actually a problem of too much voltage floating in the load upon power down. Uh, maybe floating is not the right term. But let's clip this on. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on. So if we run this, and we see there's a steady, if you can see that, steady uh, 5 volts right there. It's actually 5.1. It's nice and clean, nice and steady. It's not very noisy. We could even uh, zoom in. Or not, depending if the program likes me enough. Oh, come on. I love this, uh, I love this, uh, the O-scope itself. I'm not crazy about the program. But, you know. But look at that. Look how clean that is. That is a nice, beautiful 5.1 volts as is to be expected from all the work I did on that DC to DC converter. So anyway, we got a smooth 5 volts, right? I'll run this again. Let's see what happens when I unplug the power. Look at that. It's still 1 volt going, 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 but it's still, look at that. It's still got like a volt and a half. Going, 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 going. And we could just sit here for like, I don't know, maybe five minutes before this thing's actually going to hit zero. And that's the problem. That's just, a, that's just a capacitor, right? That's just a 470 microfarad capacitor. Why are we getting this long tail end of a drop? Well, the short, simple answer is there is not enough of a resistive load on the, on the, on the output, the plus and minus, to to drain this capacitor so it's just got this little bit of energy and if something could suck away that energy then this would drop really quickly what could do that what's the simplest form of load that we have available in our arsenal of parts can you think of it it's a resistor yes something like this well it's connected to a wire but you know what i mean Fucking resistors, man. They're cool. And there is something that I learned when I was working on CRTs um, for the first time years ago. I've been working on them ever since. But something that CRTs use a lot, cathode ray tubes, old televisions, for those that don't know, is a bleeder resistor. Bleeder resistor. 
Let's see what Wikipedia says about bleeder resistors. In electronics, a bleeder resistor is a resistor connected in parallel with the output of a high voltage power supply circuit for the purpose of discharging the electric charge stored in the power supply's filter capacitors when the equipment is turned off. That's pretty helpful. There's a huge mistake with that, though. Does anybody know what it is? So this part right here. You don't need high voltage power supply to need a bleeder resistor. Case in point, my circuit. It's only 5 volts. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's used in parallel when there's nothing to absorb the power. Even if it's high voltage, if you have something to absorb the power consistently, then you wouldn't need a bleeder resistor. It's a, it's a load problem. It's not a problem of voltage, necessarily. It's mostly used in high voltage applications so that people don't kill themselves working on stuff upon after power off. But that's not its main purpose. It's just its most common application. CRTs, of course, can kill you. So that's why they're very popular in CRTs. Um, because you need to you need to discharge those capacitors so people don't get hurt. Because the flyback, especially, has a lot of voltage. So, how are bleeder resistors helpful in our situation? Here's a nice useful post on electronicspoint.com. Threads bleed resistor. And they give us a nice little easy equation using Ohm's law. Wattage equals voltage squared. Uh, oh, voltage, yeah, voltage squared divided by R. So your resistor equals voltage squared divided by watts. That's the amount of power a resistor across the output. Uh, that's the amount of wattage a resistor would need to be rated at. Um, and he talks here, this person, he or she or they, I don't know who they are, but they say, uh, they talk about the amount of energy stored in a capacitor given by a, an equation for joules, which is great. Dissipate more than one joule every eight seconds. A quarter watt resistor will dissipate a joule in four seconds, half watt in two seconds, and one watt resistor in one second. Work out your joules to decide how much power. Um, we're not even close to a, a joule of power, so we don't have to worry about that too much what we do want to worry about, though, is two things. One is the amount of power that is going to be wasted, because whatever the resistor, whatever this wattage number is, is going to be totally wasted. Um, and that will be consistent. So let's, let's do an example. I'm going to use my phone here, because I hate math. I do. I do not like math. And I'm going to pull out my calculator. Calculator. So our resistor equals voltage squared divided by watts. All right, let's see. Our voltage squared is going to be, our voltage is 5, right? So 5 times 5 equals 25, right? And we divide that by our wattage. Now, what's a really common wattage of resistor? One fourth watt, right? That's what all those striped colored band resistors are. Like this one. That's a one fourth watt resistor. Very, very common. So 1 fourth watt resistor, so divided by 0.25, 1 fourth of watt, equals 100. So you could actually theoretically get away with a 100 ohm resistor for a 5 volt power supply if, uh, if uh, you, you had it rated at 1 fourth of a watt. Now, to be intelligent, you shouldn't just have it rated at that. It should always be rated higher because it's going to burn. It's going to get real, real hot. And uh, you want to you want to rate it. I would say at least double that to be on the safe side. And that's if that's if you have no consideration for the amount of wasted power that you have. Now, what happens? Also, the other thing to consider too is that we didn't have exactly five volts. We had five point one. So let's say uh, we do 5.1 times 5.1 divided by, and let's say uh, instead of 0.25, let's, let's do 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is the common value for SMD resistors. We could use one of those instead, which would be kind of nice. Divided by 0 0.1, waste less power. 260 ohms, right? That's pretty great. And so, if you wanted to do even less, let's say, even less power wasted, I mean, because this is, this is for a, a battery, this is for a portable circuit. 
Oh, come on now. 26? Point zero one. That's that's a really small amount of power. Yeah, twenty six hundred. So, because of that, I would recommend for my specific example for a five volt situation, any resistor between. You know, theoretically, you could go as low as two hundred with the with a regular one fourth watt, and be safe, all the way to twenty six hundred. And so for my rough values of safety I, in conservativeness, I'm saying, eh, let's say between 470, which is a standard value, and uh, 2K2. Now, I already hooked up, oh, excuse me, I already hooked up a 470 here, right here, 470 ohm, and that's going from the plus to the minus, and there's a switch. So we can see the difference in the scope when I switch that, as far as powering down that capacitor. Let's check it out. Right now the switch is off, and that's where we get this really long curve, right? No bleeder resistor. Now let's connect our bleeder resistor and see what happens. Alright, I'm going to switch the bleeder resistor on. There's not going to be any change in the output because it can handle the wattage. So it's just burning off the extra wattage in the resistor right now, which is what that equation was. Now I unplug it. Bam! Look at that! Look at that beautifulness! And it goes right back up when I plug it in. So instead of that super long curve we had before, we have a quick little curve right there. And what's that? That is, if we zoom in here, still new to this program. Oh, stop recommending things to me. That is, let's see, like 19.7. So let's say uh, 20 seconds to uh, goes to zero. 19.7 to. Hmm, I still have to zoom in a little more here. Do, 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 do. Oh, what a beautiful curve! Look at that. If we put it on 20 seconds. 20.2. It's all the way at zero by 18.7, but it's damn close by by minus 19.2. So about a second, about a second to uh, to reach zero, which is fine. I, I'm pretty happy with a second for turning on and turning off. Um, for resetting that latch, which is what will happen. It'll probably happen a lot sooner than that. But we can test it, of course. And now, again, let's remove power. And I've already got the bleeder resistor on. 1001, plug it back in, it's green. You're not getting red anymore. Why is that? That's the bleeder resistor. Pretty cool, right? Uh, a simple resistor actually could solve my problem. Let's see what happens again if I take off that bleeder resistor. I just switched it back up, plugged it back in, let's put it on red. This is with no bleeder resistor. Unplug it, 1001, 1002, 1003, and it's still red, right? So that bleeder resistor completely helps. It helps a lot. So that's one of our options. Bleeder resistor, awesome. And I think if you add one in the very high range, you know, the 2000 ohm range, you're doing pretty good, right? You aren't burning off a ton of power. You're helping that slope a little bit. You're, it's one method. It's one option to include in your arsenal of ways to do an effective power on reset. What's another way? Another way is to use a load of some kind. In this case, I have a Hall effect sensor that actually goes to the circuit, but it's optional. And if I apply that, that's actually after the diode drop. That's another way that I can drop the voltage for this class D flip-flop. And the third way, of course, is with the voltage divider circuit that I mentioned earlier. And last but not least, with a diode. I have somebody at the door, so I have to leave real soon here. So while this diode didn't help using the uh, series resistor in the circuit that's recommended, 
and I can't show you this with the scope um, because my scope won't let me pick it up actually and I'll talk about that so if we look in this circuit if I have a diode here like this it does nothing for me there's too much voltage sag for it to, uh, it's not enough voltage sag really, for it to do anything. But if I remove R, the R here, the 10 kilo ohm resistor, so that reset is essentially floating, right? Which means it wouldn't actually work. Well, actually it will, because this diode, like all diodes, has reverse leakage current, especially if it's a shot key. And so it will let a little bit of current go to the reset. And while that will, that will be delayed, because this reset uses such little amount of power, you know, in the nano amps, it will activate the circuit. So that is another option uh, in some cases, and especially in my case, I could actually just use a single diode to also help that curve improve. And I can't pick that up because if I put my probe on this side of the diode, my probe itself actually draws enough current that that leakage current um, doesn't work because it's the increased resistance with the probe. So I can't actually show you that on the scope, you'll just have to take my word for it. But uh, that's another option. So you have voltage divider, bleeder resistor, diode without the RC network if you're lucky, and uh, an actual load change if you want to just apply a load to your uh, near closer to your, your circuit itself if you have something that it's powering. Um, and a different, it doesn't have to be a dummy load necessarily. And so those are your arsenal. Um, and not even, not including, of course, the Schmidt trigger that you could try or, or this, uh, transistor as well for, for brownout protection. And that concludes what I'm going to talk about here for today. So have fun hacking everybody. This is how, uh, power on reset circuits work as far as I understand them so far. I'm going to learn more. But now you have some options, and you don't have to struggle so much uh, making your flip-flop work properly, or whatever microcontroller you have. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.